In conclusion, there are two great combination of forces in the Middle East for decades to come that directly involve Turkey and its experience in the political realm. First, secular versus religious, and secondly, elected governments versus the military. There are other components, of course, but these are the ones where Turkey is directly relevant. With Prime Minister Erdogan's speech in Cairo last year and Turkey's advice to political parties in the Middle East region, Turkey is already on record with its view of a religious constituency and a secular constitutional state. On the second issue, elected governments versus the military, Turkey has the opportunity to re-examine this issue in light of its external national interest and its ability, and its ability to influence the future political developments of the region. Turkey could see, and we all could see, uh, decades of bitterness and struggle between militaries of countries and new democratic forces. We just saw in Syria this last week contention between civilian committees and uh, military fighters inside the country. Uh, this is an issue that is quite apart from the role of religion. Turkey has very good reasons to have, and very importantly, to be seen to have, a first-rate military force fully capable of defending Turkey's national interest in the region. In the present circumstance, if, as seems true, there is no present danger of an internal military threat to the state or to the government of Turkey, and I listened to Mr. Collins' remarks about the good relationship between the Turkish government and the Turkish military, then resolving in a positive way the issue of military officers being held for trial in Turkey could provide an excellent example to the region about the primacy of democracy and the healing power of reconciliation within a society. If Egypt or Libya or some other Middle East neighbor needs an example of how it can be done the right way, Turkey is the only state present with a relevant experience on these two transformative issues, secular government and a religious constituency on the one hand, and elected governments and the role of the military on the other. Turkey has an enormous interest in long-term stability and democratic progress. If the region explodes, Turkey will be forced to make very difficult choices. For Turkey to take the higher road on regional strategic differences and approaches, and for Washington and Ankara to practice collaborative and realistic diplomacy will be two key components of an effective plan for the region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Um, Ambassador Ross Wilson of the Atlanta Council and formerly Ambassador to Accra, please. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, again, it's a pleasure to be here, and my thanks and congratulations to. Uh, the Middle East Institute and the Institute of Turkish Studies, that is another hat that I wear, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, collaborating in this uh, important conference. Uh, my remarks will cover a little bit of the same ground uh, as Ambassador Pearson's. I'll come at it in a slightly different, uh, in a slightly different way, um, and illustrate what I what I hope are slightly different points, although not substantively that different in terms of the conclusions. I was struck during Ambassador Tan's remarks by a phrase he used. He said, um, how, he reflected on how pivotal U.S.-Turkish relations have become uh, for the United States and for Turkey in a very troubled part of the world. Um, and I'm sure Ambassador Pearson would agree with me that it didn't look, certainly didn't look that way uh, in, <clears throat> uh, in 2003 to 2005 or in 2005 to 2007 or 2009 and 10 arguably even in early 2011, uh, all each of these periods with some pretty serious dissonances, if not disagreements uh, or worse. Uh, of course, the disagreement over Iraq in 2003 uh, was an important watershed in the region. 
we have dominated U.S. Turkish relations from March 2003, or even arguably somewhat before that, uh, up at least until uh, the end of the Bush administration, uh, to some extent beyond that. Sharp disagreements, uh, and, and although obviously the disagreement over the invasion of Iraq has not gone away, there still are plenty of kind of raw bits that remain uh, in U.S.-Turkish relations uh, that are related one way or another to the Iraq problem uh, and the PKK presence in northern Iraq, I think, being one of them. Sharp disagreements uh, over, uh, over Iran. Um, I was struck when I arrived in 2005 by the limited extent of our discussions about the Iran nuclear problem, our bilateral discussions. And for a period, we were able to get ourselves reasonably in sync uh, but things really fell apart in, uh, in 2010, huge disconnect. However it happened, whatever was the sequence of events, sequence of events uh, a, a huge and profound uh, dissonance uh, between our two countries. And disagreements on a range of other issues. Uh, in 2005, prior to my going to Turkey, a big stink between the United States and Turkey uh, over uh, then President's, I think it was 2005, 2004 maybe, President Cesar's plans uh, to visit Damascus uh, as part of Turkey's outreach to uh, President Assad, who so many people from both the United States and Turkey vilified extensively this morning. Um, disagreements about uh, the Caucasus, obviously issues related to Armenia, uh, a serious set of difficulty. Uh, differences on the Palestinian issue, on the Black Sea, and sort of uh, how people were uh, talking about the Black Sea, um, a, uh, a seeming accentuation uh, throughout, it ebbed and flowed throughout this period, these periods, but an accentuation of differences, an accentuation of grievances, a whole popular mythology that sort of was, became associated with this that aggravated anti-Americanism in Turkey that the United States somehow supports the PKK, that we had a hidden agenda uh, flowing out of our, Iraq, uh, our efforts in Iraq to dismember the country, that the uh, Bush administration's broader Middle East North Africa initiative was somehow aimed, gonna be part of a bigger plot to remake Turkey in an American image of moderate Islam. It, and I, I kinda wanted to go back over those things because that really wasn't very long ago. Uh, and it was the world that I had to deal with. It was the world to some extent that Ambassador Pearson had to deal with and Eric Edelman between the two of us. And, and, and vestiges of these things uh, continue even, uh, even today. And I would note even on Syria, in the latter, in the early, early part of 2000, Syria and Libya, in the early part of 2011, pretty sharp disagreements between uh, Ankara and Washington about how to deal with that. I was in Ankara in March 2011 when President Erdogan gave a fiery speech at the World a Political Forum, uh, the first World Political Forum that, that Turkey had called in Istanbul, a fiery speech uh, really coming up quite stridently against the idea of any NATO involvement uh, in Libya. So uh, what changed and what can go wrong today? And this, again, will review some of the themes that that Ambassador Pearson um, has touched on. One important and obvious thing that this whole conference is reflecting off of is the Arab awakening uh, and the, the opportunities and the threats and the complications that that presents uh, for, uh, for Turkey, the opportunities and complications it presents for American policymakers. And after this course correction, or what looks to me at any rate like a course correction in Turkish foreign policy, with respect to the Arab awakening in about March, April 2011, a real sense of, if not exactly identical goals, uh, certainly pretty similar interests uh, and efforts to try to uh, collaborate uh, more decisively there. And I think substantively the policy change was to shift Turkey much more decisively in favor of support for democracy and democracy movements as opposed, for, as opposed to continuing relations with autocrats who had been convenient for Turkey, just as they'd been convenient for the United States and Europe and others, autocrats in Egypt, in Libya, in Syria, and elsewhere. And so both of us made that shift, and both of us have found ways uh, to work together in an increasingly complicated 
region. I think it, a corollary of that is the U.S. withdrawal from Iraq that, that does make, it does simplify certain things in U.S.-Turkish relations, and especially uh, added to the stakes the Turkey, uh, Turkish leaders felt in involving Turkey directly in, more directly, uh, in, uh, in the Iraq project, involved more directly in, in Baghdad and, the, and Baghdad politics, involved more directly in intercommunal inter, uh, inter uh, conversations between the Shia and the Sunni, between the uh, Shia and the Kurds uh, in, in particular. The stakes went up for Turkey in finding ways to work better to, with the United States uh, on matters related to Iraq. A corollary to that is the PKK and the initiation in November or December 2007 of U.S. intelligence and other assistance uh, to Turkey in going after PKK encampments uh, in northern Iraq. That allowed a different kind of behavior uh, by Turkey toward the United States on matters related to Iraq. And it also facilitated a, a sea change in Turkey's relationships with, with the Kurds, Iraqi Kurds, that then also uh, had some beneficial effects in terms of U.S.-Turkish relations. But there's some other pieces that are a little bit farther afield. I'm not sure I'd 100% buy the argument, but I could actually, uh, I would want to entertain the argument uh, that, uh, that the difficulties between Turkey and the European Union may actually have helped to foster a better U.S.-Turkish relationship. Certainly, the, the dramatic slowdown of Turkey's uh, EU accession bid, we could say the stalling of EU, Turkey's EU accession bid, um, and, and an increasingly brittle dialogue on a whole range of other things that kind of culminates in my mind when the French call a meeting uh, in Paris on the, on the crisis in the Arab awakening region on Libya at that point, and just, oh, by the way, forgets to invite Turkey. And, and it, it, you know, the, the, the feeling in Turkey they needed to shore up their relations with the one uh, important, the one Western ally on whom they thought they could count a little bit, uh, a little bit more. And I, I think I would, I want to at least, as I said, entertain the idea that, that EU, that the slowdown in the EU peace helped us. Uh, development of a whole set of economic uh, dialogue, and there was some reference to this in some of the earlier sessions, I won't elaborate that, but that's quite new. Uh, and a, a whole range of, uh, of economic issues that are now on the table that they weren't, in part because our relations previously were so dominated by military security matters, or in my time, by Iraq on a more or less 24-7 uh, basis. Um, but there are a couple of other pieces I'd want to refer to. One is a big change in the way that Washington and Turkey deal with one another. In my time, uh, Turkey and the United States, the U.S.-Turkish relationship was basically run through the embassies. Uh, I would say somewhat more largely the American embassy in Ankara, but the Turkish embassy here obviously also played a very big role. Today, there is a proliferation of uh, of ties that go, of, of communications and things going on through all kinds of different channels, on the phone, emails, uh, meetings in third countries. Uh, from talking to my counterparts, uh, coll or former colleagues in Ankara, they spend a significant amount of time finding out what in the world's going on that they don't know about because it's an exchange that they're not part of and part of what an ambassador is supposed to do is sort of piece together uh, what's happening so it, it, it sort of fits. Um, 